So you might wonder why the drone won't fly left and it won't fly right, but it will fly forwards and it will fly backwards. Okay, if you try and launch your drone this way, it's not gonna work. It worked in the Mini 2, it's not gonna work in the Mini 3, it's just gonna drop out of the sky. Hey everyone, today I wanna share with you 10 things you may not know about the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Let's jump right in. When an exciting new drone comes out, such as the DJI Mini 3 Pro, we often spend all our time trying out the big headline features, such as vertical video. This often means we miss features, modes, or settings that are slightly harder to find, but super useful in helping you improve your flying experience, get more cinematic videos, and get better photos. Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look at 10 things you might not know about the DJI Mini 3 Pro. So let's get straight into it with the first thing that you might not know. Disable sideways flight. So what is this option? and why would you use it? This option only appears in the settings if you set obstacle avoidance to bypass mode. If you have obstacle avoidance set to break or off, you'll not see this option in the settings menu. Whenever you set obstacle avoidance to bypass, you'll see a new option called disable sideways flight. Now what this option does is if you move the right stick right or left, the drone will simply stay in place. You will be able to fly the drone forwards or backwards, and you'll be able to turn the drone left or right and obviously ascend or descend, but you will not be able to fly the drone horizontally left or right. Now, why would you use this option? Well, it's all to do with the obstacle avoiding sensors and their position on the drone. With the DJI Mini 3 Pro, the sensors only look forwards, backwards and downwards. So by disabling sideways flight, it means you're never in a position where you'll be flying the drone sideways and potentially crash into a tree or obstacle that the drone didn't see coming. Now this option is obviously for beginners. In my opinion, I recommend that you keep this off so that you can look left or right and see obstacles with your drone rather than relying on the drone not being able to fly left or right itself. But I have found this option is useful for one thing. If you're lining up a shot and you want the drone to fly perfectly straight, I sometimes find it hard to keep the drone flying straight just by pushing forward on the right stick. I find my thumb tends to wander to the right or left and sometimes you go off center. So by turning on this option, it means your drone will fly perfectly straight forward and will not deviate to the left or to the right. Find my drone. So what do you do if you need help locating your drone? Let me paint a picture. Let's say you're flying your drone over a large grassy field. You're getting a really nice shot low to the ground and you misjudge things. The drone accidentally clips the grass and flips over, but because it's a tall grassy field, you're having trouble locating your drone. Well, there's a really neat feature on the drone called Find My Drone. And what this will do is it will start the drone pulsing the motors every few seconds and making a loud audible beep to help you locate it. To turn this feature on, simply go into the maps in the DJI Fly app and hit Find My Drone. The drone will start beeping, the motors will start pulsing, and this should help you find your drone in those scenarios. Subject scanning. Now the traditional way of doing active tracking on the DJI Mini 3 Pro or any DJI drone that has active tracking, is you use your finger to draw a box over the subject that you want to track. But with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, there's now a even more convenient way so that you can start tracking subjects quicker. Go into the settings and turn on subject scanning. And what this will do is this will overlay a little plus icon over objects that it automatically recognizes can be tracked. Then all you need to do is tap that icon, the box will automatically appear around your subject and you can start tracking them. If you have multiple subjects in your vision, then the drone will automatically put this icon over all of them. And then you simply just want to tap on the person or subject that you want to track. This is a really convenient way of tracking, but something you do need to be aware of is because the DJI Mini 3 Pro currently doesn't have tracking on vertical video mode, whenever you have this subject scanning mode turned on, the option to use vertical video mode will disappear. To get it back, just simply turn off subject scanning. Don't try the nudge take off. So there's two standard methods you can use for taking off your DJI Mini 3 Pro. The first is the auto take off functionality. This is where you put the drone down on the ground and then on the DJI Fly app, you press and hold auto take off. The propellers will automatically start and the drone will rise up into the air itself. You can also use this method for hand launching your drone. You can put the drone on the palm of your hand or you can hold it securely. You can press and hold the auto take off button and the drone will take off out of your hand and into the air. This is a great method if you don't wanna put the drone down in the ground because maybe you're at a beach where it's really sandy, for example. The other way you can take your drone off is using manual takeoff. This is where you push the sticks downward and inwards to start the propellers and then you hold up in the left stick and the drone will take off into the air. Now it's important that you hold up in the left stick long enough that the drone takes off into the air and starts to hover. 
As mentioned in other videos, if you let off that left stick too soon, the drone can fall out of your hand. Now with the Mini 2, there was a third way you could take the drone off, and this was the nudge or push up method. You'd start the propellers by pushing the joysticks downwards and inwards, and then you would nudge or push the drone into the air and the drone would take off automatically. Now I've tried this with the DJI Mini 3 Pro and this method does not work. You can start the propellers, but when you nudge or push the drone up, the drone will not take off out of your hand. So do not be trying this method because if you nudge into the air and let go, the drone will just fall out of your hand. Quick transfer. So what do you do if you want the high resolution videos and photos off your DJI Mini 3 Pro and onto your phone to quickly post them on social media or onto something like your iPad to start editing them? Well, starting with the DJI Mini 2, DJI introduced Quick Transfer and this is now available on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. To use this, you'll need the DJI Fly app and you might not have this if you've been using the DJI RC. Now it's worth mentioning, currently you cannot Quick Transfer the high resolution files from your DJI Mini 3 Pro to the DJI RC but that's fine because I don't think this is something you're going to be doing anyway. To use Quick Transfer, simply turn on your DJI Mini 3 Pro and fire up the DJI Fly app. You'll see a prompt in the bottom left corner to enter Quick Transfer mode, and then you want to follow the steps to connect your drone. Once in, you can Quick Transfer the high resolution videos and photos to your phone, and this is really quick and fast to do, and then you'll have them high quality files on your phone to post to social media or start editing them. Now something that is really neat about this feature is if you've been doing something like firmware updates with your DJI Mini 3 Pro and had the drone stationary inside, you'll have noticed how warm and hot the drone gets. I've actually had to put a fan on it when I'm doing firmware updates just to make sure the drone stays cool. But whenever you're in this quick transfer mode, it seems like all the features such as the camera aren't turned on in the drone and the drone doesn't actually get very hot at all, giving you lots of time to use the quick transfer mode and get your videos and photos onto your phone. Easy dolly zoom. The dolly zoom is a really nice effect that you can do with a drone. And now with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, it's even easier. You can almost get an assisted mode when doing it. If you use tracking and draw a box around your subject, enter spotlight mode, and then start to fly the drone back away from you. If you tap the zoom button on the DJI Fly app, the zoom will slowly go from one times to two times zoom. This means that all you have to do is start to fly the drone back from you, hit that zoom button, and the drone will automatically zoom the camera in for you, as all you have to concentrate on is flying the drone back. This is a nice assisted way of getting a dolly zoom effect and helps you do it and get a smoother result, giving you this awesome little effect that you can add in to your projects and sequences. No prop guard. I've seen a lot of discussion online about the fact that the DJI Mini 3 Pro does not come with a propeller guard. But I actually think because of the design of the DJI Mini 3 Pro, if you place the propellers in the way I'm about to show you, you shouldn't actually need one. The reason propeller guard was really useful on drones like the DJI Mini 2 was because as you put your drone down into your camera bag or your drone bag, you wanted to make sure that the propeller didn't catch on the end of the bag and as you force the drone down in, snap a propeller or break a propeller. If you place the propellers in the way I'm about to show you, this shouldn't happen with your DJI Mini 3 Pro. For the top propellers, you want to place them over the body of the drone and press them together until you feel a slight resistance. For the bottom propellers, you want to place the propellers inside of the two little standoffs as shown here. This means the propellers will be firmly held in place and it means that as you put your drone down into your camera bag, these won't snag or catch, preventing you from breaking a propeller. Now, if you really want to use a propeller guard, you can simply buy something like a cheap Velcro strap use a hairband or anything that will hold the propellers securely. But I think using this method, you will be absolutely fine. Spot metering. Whenever you're in auto exposure or auto mode, the drone is constantly trying to make sure that your entire image is exposed correctly. But in harsh lighting conditions, this can come with trade-offs. Some areas of the image might be too dark and some areas of the image might be too light. So what do you do if you want to make sure that your subject or point of interest is perfectly exposed at all times? Well, for this, we can use spot metering. To use spot metering in the DJI Fly app, you simply want to press on your subject or point of interest until a square yellow box appears on top of them. This is how you know that the spot metering mode is activated and now the drone will be using that location as its metering for the exposure to make sure that your subject or point of interest is perfectly exposed. Hold to gimbal. When controlling the gimbal of the DJI Mini 3 Pro, you can do this using the controller and using the scroll wheels. On the RC-M1 controller, you simply use the scroll wheel on the top of it. 
Using the new RC controller, again use the scroll wheel on the top of the controller to move the gimbal up and down. But there is another way that you can control the gimbal in the DJI Mini 3 Pro. In the DJI Fly app, you simply want to press and hold on the screen until a small circle appears around your finger. Then by moving your finger upwards or downwards, you can move and rotate the gimbal up and down using your finger in the DJI Fly app. Now why might you want to use this? Well, some people might find that they have smoother control over the gimbal using this, and I find it's actually really useful for when you're bringing the gimbal up to the horizon to slowly bring the gimbal to a stop rather than it coming up to the horizon and coming to a harsh stop. I find that is much more likely to happen if I'm using the scroll wheel on the back of the controller and prefer to use the tap and hold method to get smoother gimbal rotation. Drone telemetry. Let's say you're watching a video clip back from your DJI Mini 3 Pro and you wish you could know the camera settings you were using at the time so that you could replicate it. Or let's say something happened your drone in the air and you're watching the video clip back and you want to know things like the coordinates of where the drone was at, the height of the drone, the speed of the drone, to help work out what happened and why. Well now you can. Starting with previous DJI drones, they introduced a feature called video subtitles, and this overlays information like that over your video file. But the best part about this is, it doesn't ruin your video file, as you have to use a software such as VLC to view the subtitle track. To turn this on, go into settings and turn on video subtitles, then you can record all your clips. This information can be incredibly useful and it's a feature that doesn't ruin the video file. So it doesn't really make any sense why you wouldn't have it turned on. Pins to zoom. You can use the controllers and the scroll wheels and button combinations to zoom the camera of the DJI Mini 3 Pro, but there's actually a more convenient and easy way to do this. You simply want to pinch and expand your fingers to zoom the camera in and contract your fingers to zoom the camera back out. Again, why would you use this? Some people may find they have more control, smoother control using this method than using the scroll wheels. And if you're using the DJI RC N1, some people might find it difficult to press and hold the function button and use the scroll wheel when they can simply pinch and expand or pinch and contract in the DJI Fly app. Format internal storage. So one of the great new features of the DJI Mini 3 Pro is the fact that it has internal storage. And this is fantastic if you go out flying and forget your memory card you can still save the day and get a few shots. Now when that internal storage gets full, you can simply plug it into a computer or laptop and clear it out. But what happens if you're out in location, you forgot your memory card, you go to hit record and you realize, I don't have a memory card, but it's okay, I'll use internal storage. Then you realize your internal storage is full. Well, you can actually clear out your internal storage or format it using the DJI Fly app. To do this, go into settings, scroll down to the internal storage Make sure you have internal storage selected and press format. So hopefully now you've learned something about the DJI Mini 3 Pro that you didn't know before. A feature, setting or mode that will really improve your flying experience. Are there any settings or features that I've missed that you think others should be aware of to help improve their flying experience? I'd appreciate it if you comment it down below. Now if you've liked this video and you've learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones, you own a Mini 3, a Mini 2, a Mavic 3, any drone, and you want to know how to get more cinematic videos and better photos, then I have a ton of other content on my channel to help you level up your drone game that I recommend you check out. If you want to stick around and watch a few more of them now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.